Hello there and welcome to my YouTube channel, Julia McNeil Crafts. So today I am going to do a little bit of play in my junk journal. So this is a watercolour painting I did last week. So I do have a video on how I did this using the lovely Arteza gouache paints. So I will link that in the description box. And I was just thinking, for me, I'm not a fine artist. I'm not going to be selling on this artwork. I'm a crafter. So then what do we do um, with the artwork that we create in our playtime. Well today I'm going to include it in a junk journal and I've also pulled out some elements from this paper craft set. It's one I've been using throughout the year. So I've pulled out elements of that because it's got, again, it's got lots of the cacti images in it and I am going to put together a quick page. Okay, so I'm using the junk journal that I made during this month's um, Dawn and Julia Create. So that is the journal there. And I am going to add this as a tip in. So I'm going to add this in with a little bit of washi tape in a minute. But the first thing I'm going to do, because I want my two pages to coordinate, so I will be bringing, oop, sorry, knocking stuff over beside me here. I will be bringing colors that I've used in the painting over to this side here. Now, obviously this is old um, music paper. It's not designed to take watercolor in. So as soon as I hit that with watercolors, it's going to abs absorb right into the paper and you're not going to get the same movement that you do when you use a watercolor paper. You're still not going to get the same movement um, using something that has got clear gesso on it, but it's better than just leaving it blank. We will be able to do something with it. So I'm just giving that a little layer of clear gesso and I'm going to let that dry and we can add colour to that a bit later. So I am really proud of how this little cacti thing turned out. It's not something that I have um, painted before or done before so this is quite new to me so I definitely want to preserve it that's why this time I have put it in my junk journal I am looking for a ruler and of course my craft room as always is a complete mess and I can't find it so sorry for the faffing there so um, I'm just going to add some very faint lines this pen is not proving to be the best but I'm just going to add a few faint lines round the edges of this just to frame it slightly especially as my when I put the masking tape down it's not stuck particularly it's not stuck particularly well and it's bled through a little bit so it's a bit uneven so I am just going to create a few okay, lines so I finished that off camera I went and got a better pen Tell you, all my supplies seem to be running out just as I'm doing a no spend November. It's great. <laughs> so I've got a pen there um, and I've just done multiple lines around and I'm just going to add some little zigzags. It kind of matches what I did within the cactus there anyway. Um, and it just gives it a little border and I am just going to add that in there. So I said I might do another video another time of like using a painting in a card or in a mixed media project but for today I thought I'd keep it nice and simple partly because um, I have to go and pick my daughter up from school very shortly so I'm hoping this will be a quick easy page. I have got about just under half an hour so I've got some music washi here which is obviously going to match the theme of the music paper on the other side really well. So I am just going to pop a few layers of this down just to secure this into the journal. And as I said, that will provide a little bit of cohesion between the two pages. This is old washi. Washi is one of these things that I buy and they never seem to use. So. Yeah, I'm needing to kind of use that more because it does it does get a bit old <laughs> and doesn't um, doesn't stick quite as quite as well. Okay, and then I think what I might do is just again just to tie the two pages together. I'm going to put some elements of the music notes into the actual painting as well. Just to mix it up a little bit. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. And what I might do as well is just add a little bit of washi this side just to make sure that it is well and truly secure. Don't know what theme this side will have any um, 
I don't know, but it's going to have some uh, <laughs> gold hearts in the middle. <laughs> but that's fine. It means the page is ready for a, another day. Okay, and again, I'm just going to pop some more of that across the page so that when I do come to do it, I'm not having to rummage for this washi, or if I've happened to use it all, I still sort of have elements of it across the across the page. So it'll all tie in when I actually choose to do something with it. And this is what I think is quite a good idea. Sometimes when you don't have a lot of time um, to craft and you'd quite like to do just a little bit of something, if you've got sort of semi-prepared pages like this, either from mop-up pages or, you know, just elements that you've stuck down randomly. Um, and there's no, there's no thinking required in this but you can just, if, you know, if you sometimes you have a day where you're lacking in creativity, you've lost your mojo a bit, but you know creating's good for you, but you just don't feel it. That you know, going through something like this and just sticking random bits of things down, um, it will kind of feed that desire for creativity. But you don't have the pressure of having to produce something beautiful, um, and then you'll find that your body will kick in. I used to be a therapist, so this is the sort of thing that I would encourage people to do. You'd then find that, you know, the body memory would kick in, the muscle memory would kick in, and it would just enjoy the familiarity of, you know, put, having the paintbrush in your hand, having the scissors in your hand, whatever it is that you choose to do. Um, and it takes away the pressure of producing a finished piece. Um, and quite often that can re-kickstart your creativity. So that is quite a good tip for, you know, if you're just not... Just not feeling it, but feel you want to do something. Right, I have reactivating my gouache paints um, from the last time that I used them. Obviously they are water-based, so you can reactivate them. Now you can see, when I created that um, this painting, the, the paint moved so fast onto the project, you just don't get that same <laughs> that same movement because we're not wor working on a watercolour um, paper so it's fine when we're just creating a quick wash for a background but if you're wanting to get those lovely watercolour effects um, then you know it is better to use watercolour paper so it might even be that when you create your junk journal if you like watercolouring in your junk journal then you know make sure that you include a couple of sheets of watercolour so I'm not, as I said, I'm not going to get the same blend, but I'm just going to put some of the similar colours down. In fact, just so that the two pages marry together a little bit. I'm thinking that I might just take some of this pink actually and just directly put it on the page. So it's, yeah, see, and I can get the vibrancy of that. It's not looking overly pretty at the minute, but you know. Hey-ho, we will make it work. Okay, so I've got some different pieces of card from my scrap bin and I am just going to rub those in and use them to pick off the paint. It means I then have some painty papers for another project and I just make the actual page here look more organic um, and less like, you know, a two-year-old has attacked it with paint. <laughs> and as I said, this will, this will create some interesting artwork ready to go for a, another day. So there we go, we've created a little bit of colour tinting. Now. Okay, so I have dried that um, paper now. I've actually just chopped this down a little bit more because I'd quite like it as a tip in. So again, I'm just going to be adding extra elements and interest. So I'm going to stick that down with washi to match, match the other side. Oops. I may need to just snip this a little bit so that it will fold out. So I've cut the washi there where I want it to fold and we will just do that. I probably should have made the washi a bit shorter than the tip in, but there we go. You'll live and learn, but we've still managed to make it work. And now I am once again wrestling with this washi, trying to find the end of it. There we go. Okay. I'll stick that there so that we've got a bit of both sides to secure it. Okay. Okay. 
I'm not holding it like that. Okay, so I'm thinking let's decorate this inner side here first. And then we will look at we will look at what we can do with the rest of it. That looks quite nice like that. So um, I will grab my silly sticky dots <laughs> because I've run out of wet glue and I'm on a no spend November. <laughs> so I'm having to make do with what I have. But that's good, it'll get it used up. It's, honestly, I used to think these were the best things. It was the only thing I would ever craft with. Didn't like wet glue at all. I thought it wrinkled the page. And then I realized that there's different qualities of wet glue. I started using my cosmic shimmer glue and never looked back but um, yeah <laughs> I signed up for Sabrina's uh, No Spend November so I'm having to use what I have it will do that's the thing, it shows you that you know, you can create with whatever you have to hand, it's all good so I'm just going to put a few elements tucked away in there that's quite pretty. So again, these are all little bits of die cuts that were in that set that I mentioned and they've been sitting in my bit box. So um, yeah, I'm just sort of crafting with the little watercolour that I did the other day and a few elements from my bit box, a few bits of scrap papers. We don't need much to create something really beautiful. Okay, and I think what I'm going to do as well is just to edge, just to edge this a little bit like so because I have to edge everything let's face it <laughs> the reason I do that is because I really do feel it frames something especially when you've got so much to look at you know we've got things folding out things folding in lots of things to look at it draws your eyes and focuses it in on um, something so I'm thinking that I might just rip and tear a bit of this paper Do I, do I, do I? Maybe I'll just put a bit. Yeah, I think what I'll do is I will make it a bit smaller and have it so that it adds a bit of interest but doesn't take over the page. my silly sticky dots again. <laughs> this is from when Don Bibby was on QVC. And it seemed so good at the time because you were like, it saved you with the drying um, time. But, I mean, this probably was over 20 years ago now. Um, whereas I think glues have come a long, a long way. I've got fast drying glues now. It makes a world of difference. Okay, I'm going to stick that there. And again, I think I'm just going to add a little bit of doodle into that. Like so. Okay, should we get, have something else to jazz it up a little bit? What have we got? <laughs> That's quite pretty. That's quite pretty. I feel like I've lost the ability to speak again. That happens to me some, from time to time. <laughs> You're all probably going, phew! <laughs> Let's see. That's actually quite nice because we see the flowers then from underneath but you've got to open the flap to see the little owl. I quite like that. So let's put that, let's see. Oh, no, a little bit higher. There we go. Yep. We will do that. Okay, and then I think I will put 
some of these up here. Again, I'm looking so that this is framed, so that when you look at this, it looks like a page in its own right, but then when you open it, it also work, still works. You want every element that you've got in there to, to work together and look like it's meant to be. So I think that does work quite well. And I think that's possibly as almost done. Um, do I want to put another cactus down? Cacti. Yeah, I feel I want. I feel I want the cacti to be a more of a featured element than it's turning out to be because you know the whole reason I'm doing this is because of my painting over here. There. Do I want the butterfly? Oh, decisions, decisions, decisions. We could maybe have that coming down there. I think. Yeah, okay. I think we're getting there. Right. Also, I've got this little sentiment that I also find in my bit box that says quirky, and I just think that's me to a T, so I think I will put that there. But that I am going to edge in black. So that again, we can see it, because otherwise it's going to get lost on the page a little bit. So I am going to add that in there. Okay, and I think junk journals are where you play. So I'm just going to write, um, just try, I think. Just try. Um, and then explain its first painting. Uh, cactus. Okay, so it's just a little note there, um, just as a little bit of extra something or other, a little bit of personalisation. Right, um, I am going to do the frame trick round here as well. I seem to have managed to get a big dirty fingerprint on that, so we'll have to see what we can do about that. As you can see, my lines aren't very straight at all. I totally went off there, but it doesn't matter because um, because we can cover it. Um, and then, as I said, those little squiggles. It's because I was talking about the thumbprint. Um, but those little squiggles sort of cover all all mistakes. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to stick that down up there. And I think we may have actually, I may actually have loads of time to spare. I'm just wondering whether it might be, I've got this little, let's do one thing at a time, Julia. I'm just going to chop that off so that it's even. I'm going to need a flower down here now because the rule of thirds it was like because you've got one there and one there it doesn't look right here so um, I'll stick one up there okay and then I'll stick one down here so that the eyes moving around the page as we would like it to I'm kind of wondering whether to have a little birdie that sort of goes on the flap. Maybe not. Maybe not. Right, I've got to find... Oh, I could do that though, couldn't I? Yeah, there we go. That gets my cacti in and covers my finger mark splodge. 
So this side still isn't looking quite right to me in comparison to that side and it is most likely because I've not edged it. So I'm hoping that once I draw some lines around and that we frame it and we pull the eye into what we've created that that will make a, a lot more sense. It is honestly amazing the difference giving something a black frame or a little doodle border makes it really, it's like tricks it does to the brain. Now I am quite liking it, I am going to add a bit more of this um, music washi over this side because this side feels quite busy and this side doesn't seem to match at the same so I'm just wanting to put a few more, a few more elements of that in here. And we'll see how we feel about it then. Okay, I think that's quite good. I am going to cover my sentiment and I also want to cover this page because I like my painting as it is. And I am going to get this um, white acrylic ink Give it a little shaky shake. And let's just add a few white splatters. Again, this is a contrast thing because we've got lots of black in the page. Just having some white splatters will give that sort of light and shade effect and hopefully just sort of draw the page together. Um, and I might just, I really don't want to wreck my painting, so I'll cover that and maybe just put a few on this side as well, just so that the two pages work together a little bit. Okay. So I think that is me, quick and easy journaling and a way if you do decide you know if you watch these little watercolor tutorials whether it's mine or somebody else's and you want to give it a play because I think as creative people we do like to sort of try lots of different things but then it's a way of bringing us trying something new into what we already do so I hope you've enjoyed this and um, if you have please do consider liking and subscribing and I will be back again very soon okay take care then and goodbye